What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to Doing Things with E-Dub. Back with another one. Today we're going to get right after. We're going to do a spicy shrimp pasta. One of my favorites. Not too many ingredients. You know, basically a lot of generic stuff. Salt, pepper, garlic, onions. I'm going to add some spinach in there. And I'm going to go ahead and make the paste, gravy, juice, whatever you like to call it. Some people call it just pasta sauce, but there's so many different ways to make it without you having to store buy it, which is the easiest way. You can go get vodka sauce, you can go get traditional marinara and add Alfredo to it, or you can make it from scratch like I'm going to do. So first we're going to go with our virgin olive oil, and you can use any kind of olive oil doesn't have to be virgin olive oil I like virgin olive oil so that's what I'm going to choose today um, I didn't do the smaller salt I went with the sea salt just because I wanted to give it some time to try to go ahead and melt in everything keep it nice and thick so now I'm adding in my butter I'm going to go ahead and let that butter even out before I put garlic in there I always try to go with fresh garlic versus that store bought in the jar of garlic it's just it's mushy I mean, you can still use it it's mushy it dissolves a little bit faster but fresh garlic still has that taste and it's strong it's kind of pungent when you use fresh garlic so I always do the fresh garlic now one of the things that I try to pay attention to is not burning your butter or your oil because it will turn on you very quickly if you're not paying attention so this isn't something you can walk away from something you have to pay attention to and you have to make sure that it's not going to burn on you all right so we're just going to let that simmer for a little bit we're going to go ahead and add our garlic in there but while we're waiting to add the garlic we're going to season our shrimp we're going to make sure everything's prepped and ready I went ahead and did all the measurements already for how many shrimp I'm going to do. And usually I do a larger amount depending on how many people are going to eat. But if it's just me, one other person, or maybe two other people, I may just use the whole bag. Um, and, it, and again, it, it depends on preference. Most people like a lot of shrimp. Some people don't like a lot of shrimp. So you can kind of gauge it accordingly to what your crowds after so here you see I got that garlic going fresh minced garlic like we talked about it's in there let that get a nice sizzle you know go ahead and season your shrimp a while you don't really want to add too much to your shrimp because you want to still keep that flavor of shrimp in there and not overdo it so I'm just adding a couple seasons pepper salt and a little bit of oregano, a little bit of garlic, and that's really it. And I can do Old Bay, you can do Tony's. Um, you know, it's, it's really up to you, wh whatever seasons you like to go with. I don't like to add too much in there because, like I said, it's just I still like to have the shrimp flavor versus you know, it's tasting like pure garlic or it's tasting like pure butter or all Italian season. So just be cautious with that so you can do an onion chopped up I don't particularly like onions so I'm using an onion substitute with like onion flakes you can buy them at the store uh, shrimp seasoning I use Tony's shrimp season just a couple shakes in there and what that does is that just really gives you that Old Bay kind of feel you know it's not as good as Old Bay I don't particularly think but it's a great alternative. So now, now that your onion flakes and your garlics are all cooked down and your season's cooked down and everything's brown, go ahead and add your flour in there. And you can go with a quarter cup of flour, but you want to gauge that off of how many onions. Like I said, if I was going to do real onions, I probably would have did, you know, maybe two tablespoons of onions chopped, which... A quarter cup of flour would have been more than enough 
to make your roux. So once you get your roux going, just go ahead and make sure it's not sticking too much to the pan. You need to add a little bit of flour if you need to adjust it to get it a little bit thicker. And everything is trial and error. So if you mess this up the first time, you can always come back and try it again and critique it to get it, you know, how you want it. So now you go ahead and get your chicken stock in there and let it go ahead and simmer and thicken up. And you'll see it just gets thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. And it's pretty much the same thing, same base that you're going to use for all your soups. All your pasta sauces, for the most part, you know, a couple different things that you would probably vary or change. You might add peppers, you might add celery, you know, you might add, um, I've even seen people do uh, onions, cucumbers, and squash in there. So, it's just a combination of what flavors you really want to burst in your mouth after you're, you're done making the roux. So now we, we go ahead and we add our sauce in there. Now, you can add a heavy cream. You can add milk. You can add whatever, you know, white sauce you really want to make. Like I said, you can do traditional pasta sauce and then get store-bought store Alfredo. So I didn't do that this time. I just went with a garlic, herb, and onion blend pasta sauce for, for the red just to give it some color. And it just really came out really, really, really nice. And it wasn't thick. It wasn't too creamy. It just kind of covered the noodles. And it covered the shrimp really, really well. So, again, it's just all about your preference on what you want that pasta to end up looking like. So, now we're going to go back and add some more chicken stock to it. And loosen that pasta sauce up a little bit nice and easy just loosen it up now at this point you can go in and you can add some more seasons because a lot of times when you add pasta sauce it's kind of bland you know it's not too flavorful depending on what kind of you know pasta sauce you add so you want to add your all-purpose season in there you know or your salt so you know whatever you want to add now here you can see that that color from the stock has really turned it into almost a tomato basil looking color so that's what you want to go for so now you're going to go ahead and add your fresh spinach in there now you aren't going to add all of your spinach in there you're going to add some of it you want to cook that spinach down in there get it nice and stringy stringy spinach is very good some people will do a drier spinach at the end like i know sometimes on like a spinach pizza they'll put a lot of pizza on top of the cheese and then cook it off at the very end so it gets like a little bit of a crust on it um, you know now you can go ahead and add like I said your heavy cream or your milk or your half and half whichever one you feel comfortable with I did regular milk I didn't want it too thick like I said I wanted it to be more of like a cream sauce and so you can see that color. That's the color that we're going for there. And that actually is going to be great color for presentation. So now you can add your Parmesan cheese of choice. I just had some old Parmesan left around the house. So I just went with that. But you can use fresh grated Parmesan. You can use store-bought Parmesan or... You don't have to do Parmesan at all. I mean, you could do another cheese. I mean, I think something that would go well with this would probably be fresh grated pepper jack cheese or even uh, smoked Gouda would go well with this. I wouldn't do a lot. I'd probably do a half a cup, no more than that, because, again, like I said, you don't want it to be too thick. You, you're going for that creamy taste, and as you can see, it's still kind of creamy. What I'm doing here is I'm just breaking down the little bits a parmesan that have you know stayed a little bit dense and that's fine i mean as you boil it and you let it cook off they're gonna end up breaking up anyway so we're just doing that getting it down there now we're not going to add our shrimp in here 
right away because the shrimp is already cooked. Now, I did that a while back, just cooked the shrimp off, but you can go ahead and if you want to do the shrimp raw, now would be the time where you put the shrimp in there and you let it cook for two to three minutes thoroughly on the high heat. And then just make sure you do a test to make sure your shrimp is already cooked before you eat. Obviously, you don't want it to be in a danger zone. You're eating raw shrimp. So now I'm going to go and add some of my seasons in there because I don't really need to add too much in here. So at this point, adding the seasons in here is really going to be one of the last steps for anything that I'm, I want to put in there because I've already tasted it. The color is right. It tastes amazing. I'm just going to kick it up a notch. So this is where that sea salt comes in here. You don't want to add a lot of that sea salt. Maybe about a quarter of a tablespoon. Or a quarter teaspoon. And just mix it in well. Now you can go with your shrimp. Again, it's your preference on how many shrimp you want to have. Um, if you want to fill that bad boy up with shrimp. And just have a little bit of cream sauce. Hey, go for it. I didn't. I wanted to do the complete opposite. And one of the things that you'll see happening is with a pasta, once it gets cold, it almost turns into a, a heavy paste. And then you almost have to bring it back to life, you know, once you go ahead and uh, start reheating it and stuff like that. And, and that goes with everything. Soups do that. Um any kind of pasta, you know, if you, you ever go to like Olive Garden and you sit there and you get your stuff to go or take it with you and then you get it home, you reheat it, you'll see that a lot of times that Alfredo will separate. I mean, that's pretty much what, it, what happens with pasta. So you just got to know how to bring it back to life. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to add milk. Just milk. Milk, not a lot, just, just enough to where it can get saturated and that pasta sauce will absorb that milk. All right, so now we're adding our pasta in there. Our pasta is al dente, so we're going to let it finish cooking in with that shrimp as the shrimp's heating up. And just kind of let everything stew for a little bit. I would say maybe a good 10 to 12 minutes on a medium to low heat. You know, uh, at this point, if you really want to go ahead and add some more um, spinach in there, or if you want to add some peppers, you can. I added cayenne pepper. We can also do smoked paprika. You can also use uh, red chili flakes. You know, it really just depends on what you're feeling in, in that heat of the moment, how hot you want to go. I wouldn't do too much hot sauce or, you know, anything like that because then you're going to start playing with the color and. <clears throat> You know, this is the color that you're really going to go for right here. Now you can add some more spinach. Like I said, I, I don't want to add all that spinach in there because I wanted it to get soft. But I also wanted some spinach at the end that still would hold that texture right before plating. So, you know, just add your baby spinach in there. And baby spinach is one of the things that it's going to wilt down pretty quickly, you know, based on your steam level and your heat level. So mixing it in there really well and just kind of let everything take its toll and blend it really, really good. Get some of that flavor on there before you start plating. The last thing we're going to do is really come with some more cheese. Now at this point, like I said, you can do other cheeses. I chose to go with Parmesan, but you can do various cheeses. And I encourage you to try it with some different cheeses, you know, because some people might want to do ricotta some people might want to do um mozzarella i just think parmesan goes well with it because i like to eat a dish like this with garlic bread and i feel like parmesan and garlic bread are an awesome combination those flavors match up very very well so you know after you add your parmesan in there and you don't have to overdo it you know you've already put a decent amount in there just want to go ahead and put what you need in there. And you can add some more in there for a garnish. So that's what your finished product looks like. Now we're going to go ahead and plate it up. Plate it up. You know, 
give yourself a generous amount and you just add a little bit of parsley for some color nothing major and you dig and you enjoy it this is a great meal for couples or even mother's day it's a great meal you know i want you guys to try it check it out let me know what you think as always keep doing things with e-dub and we'll catch you next time i'm out of here <laughs>